in this segment. We're going to take a look at the break apart feature and then we'll take a look at the branching feature. So first of all, break apart has a tool on our toolbar, on the editing toolbar found right here, break apart. And so I'm going to show you how that one works first. So first of all, to get started, I'm just going to choose insert image. And this is the embroidery album folder that was installed with the digitizer program. And I'm just going to select one of these simple one color designs and open that up. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit closer on that image. And I'm going to use click to design instantly to create the embroidery design for this um, artwork. Now what I can see here is that the entire design has been created in two objects. However, I can um, imagine that it would take more than one object to create all of the parts that are in this selected, I guess you could almost call it a group of objects, not to confuse this with group and ungroup because this is grouped in a very special way. So when I look at the resequence window, I can see here that what we've got is a group of objects that have been joined in a way that all of the traveling necessary to connect them all has been done by the computer. And so if you wanted to edit, for example, you know, just one of these parts, it wouldn't be possible because it's basically been grouped together and joined. And so that's where we might want to use this break apart option. So you'll notice right away if I click on break apart, now what was one little sort of cluster of objects has become an all of the individual objects. And you can see right away what gets lost when you break it apart and that's you all of the traveling because remember before this entire design was connected together and now I can see trail threads where it's jumping from one object to the next object and so on. So being able to break apart an, um, an object is great because now we have the ability to extract a part of it. Maybe we just needed this flower and we wanted to extract it from the design or maybe we just really wanted to make this particular flower larger for some reason. So we would be able to make these types of edits based on the fact that we broke the design apart. The only trouble is we would have to go through quite a bit of effort to try and path all of the objects together so that they don't have all the jumping that was going on. And so that's where the, um, the option for branching can be really helpful. So I'll show you where to find that. Under the edit drop down menu we have an option here called branching. And to use branching you need to first select multiple objects. So for example if I was to use the select tool and then just draw click and drag a box around all of these objects that were created. Now I'm going to very try to very carefully go right to the bottom of this shape right here but not to the bottom of that floral cluster there. That way I can select this object without selecting that object. Otherwise I guess I could have used the poly select tool to have created. Why don't I do that? So we use the poly select tool to select them. So same thing. Just draw a little box around there and then hit enter. And I've selected all these objects. Now if I want to I can join them back together and again that's under the edit drop down menu and the topic is called branching. So if I choose branching, it asks me to enter an entry point. Now that's the entry point for the whole cluster. Where would we like it to start sewing? So I'm going to choose um, right, I guess, here. And then for the exit point, or the, I'll choose right here. And that's it. It goes ahead and it basically paths all of these objects back together again so that once again, they're a cluster of objects. I, don't, I could call it a group, but I don't want to call it a group because I don't want to confuse group and ungroup because when we use group, there's no effort by the software to connect all of the objects and relearn all of the pathing to connect everything together. So that's specifically the difference here. So the topic is break apart and then again to rejoin them, it's branching. And so you can always tell whenever you've got an object that looks with this object type that it's a cluster of objects that have been joined together 
in a special manner that's called branching and that's why all of the um, starting and ending points for all these objects have been matched up so that you don't have those unnecessary jumps to get between the different flowers in the ob in this design so so those are great features that we have that gives us the ability to break apart a cluster and then rejoin it again later and it doesn't even have to be something that you broke apart just as an example um, I'm gonna create some satin lines so I'll create one satin line that starts here and it finishes there and then I'll create another satin line that starts right in the middle, walks down, and sews over here. And then I'll create another satin line that starts in the middle of that one, walks down over here. Maybe I'll kind of create another satin line that just starts here and goes over there. So here I've created four satin lines, and you can see that, for example, the stitching sews to the end of this line, and then it has to jump to get to the beginning of this line. And it sews from this line down and over to here and then it has to jump to get to the beginning of this line and then it sews to the end of this line and it has to jump to get to this line. So I created four satin columns and you can see them here. Four satin columns. Now if I was to select those four satin columns, so again easiest way to select multiple objects might be to draw, drag a box around them all. So I selected those four objects and now I'm going to use the tool Edit Branching. And again, it asks me down at the bottom, enter the entry point. Okay, well, let's have it start right here. Enter the exit point. Mm, okay, let's have it finish right here. And it goes ahead and it learns all of the necessary traveling to create a cluster of these four objects that are basically connected. So that's known as branching. And it starts sewing here and it finishes sewing here, but there's no longer any jumps to connect all of those individual objects. And again, if you look in your resequence dialog, you can see that those four objects have now become a small group um, that are joined together for pathing purposes. So, and of course the reverse to branching is going to be break apart. So if I want to break those back to individual objects, I click on break apart and you can see that it broke them all apart and we're back to having jumps in between the starting and ending points of those objects. So that's how you can use the tools break apart and under the edit drop down menu, branching.